said before that I, I sometimes feel a bit like the mouse in the Gruffalo. The mouse creates the Gruffalo and goes, ha, 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 I know, silly old fox doesn't he know there's no such thing as a Gruffalo. And I feel a bit like that because I keep seeing Gruffalos everywhere when I just thought I'd made, made him up. <laughs> silly old fox. Doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a Gruffalo. The Gruffalo actually grew out of a play that I was going to write and never did write. I had the idea of the story. It was actually initially going to be about a tiger, not about a Gruffalo at all. But I thought, I'll keep this up, one up my sleeve, cos I think it might make a good picture book one day. And um, I'm very, very glad I decided that. I still remember reading it for the first time and getting the text from Julia and liking it a lot, and then I started, yeah, I started trying to develop the, the characters and started sketching the Gruffalo and the mouse, and the, the initial version of the Gruffalo was a bit more fearful than the one that appears in the book, finally. I remember reading the story and getting that chill down my back, thinking, this is really good, because um, you get that moment when you read something really special. I knew it was a great story. I knew Axel had done some fantastic pictures, but Oh, we didn't know it was going to be as special as it was. The whole success of the Gruffalo did grow quite gradually, probably over about four or five years, before we really realised that we'd got one of those phenomena on our hands and that we'd got one of those books that people were going to want to read forever. It's such a lovely story that immediately you read it and it's got that factor at the end when you, you turn the last page and you just go, Oh, and we thought, oh, this is such a lovely story. It's going to make a great you new know, stage adaptation. In Lithgow Primary School up in Scotland to Broadway. Uh, it's just been Sydney Opera House. It's been in the West End. This is its fifth year in the West End. Uh, it's been all over the UK. He's very well travelled. <laughs> the two Gruffalo books have sold um, over 10 million copies worldwide. It's, it's a phenomenal number, and they, they keep selling week in, week out. And Julia and Axel, as a team, um, have brought out over 14 books together. They bring out one new book every, every year, pretty much. Every autumn we wait, what, what's their new book going to be, and what world are they going to introduce us to? <laughs> We did have offers from other film companies that wanted to just take our characters and give them all sorts of different adventures and put them on the moon or put them in Hollywood, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I just wasn't interested in that at all because for me, they are poems really. And, um, and I really like the way that they've just stuck to the words and, and the rhythms um, of the original books. Who is this creature? with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange, his tongue is black, he has purple prickles all over his back. Oh, help. Oh, no. It's a Gruffalo. Julia, in particular, always said, what I want is a half-hour special, you know, a half-hour film that just is the book and is really faithful to the book. And it took a long time, I would say years, before a company came along that wanted to do that, was willing to do that, and happily, 
did a lovely job. <laughs> We've been delighted that it's been shown in cinemas throughout America and in France. It's been shown uh, in the UK on BBC One. The viewing figures were amazing. I think it got over 10 million viewers on its first showing. It went on to be nominated for both BAFTA and an Oscar. All was quiet in the deep, dark wood. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. All of a sudden, Julia had an idea. And she had an idea for how she could make another trickster tale so the Gruffler gets tricked again. But this time, it is the little one, so you've, you've rung the changes a little bit. You can't trick the original Gruffalo again. So I think it's brilliant what she came up with to have this little one. And then it has a very different atmosphere to it because she's a little one. I hadn't really been planning to write a sequel. There were quite a few books um, in between The Gruffler and The Gruffler's Child that we did Monkey Puzzle, Room on the Broom, The Smartest Giant in Town and The Snail and the Whale, I think, all came before. So these were really the beginnings of The Gruffler's Child. I, I was trying to, to draw the, the forest at night, which I was a bit worried with. Whether, whether I could do that or not, but this, these were my first attempts to do the snowy scenery of the, of the book, and also my first attempts to draw, draw the Gruffalo's child. And her eyes are? Middle size. Middle size. What colour are they? Can you remember? Yes, you? Orange. They're not quite orange. I think they're more yellowy, but I think when they grow, when they grow older, the Gruffalo's, they get orange eyes, so she's still quite young. The Gruffler's Child, I think, is quite an endearing character. I think she's one of my favourite characters, actually, because she's very... she's very plucky. She looks still a bit more like a grown-up Gruffalo there, and I sort of did some drawings, and then, then we made her a little bit cuter. Hasn't got many of the attributes that a grown-up Gruffalo would have, like the poisonous wart or the big horns or the very pointy purple prickles. There's the snow falling. The Gruffalo's child, the Gruffalo's daughter. Thank you. Well, I think initially I wanted it to be different because I just was wary of the books being too similar. You know, I thought, I thought ahead, I suppose, to the illustrations and thought, we don't want another book with the, where Axel uses even more green and brown. Yes, I'd used crayons. them all up by then. <laughs> When we finished The Gruffalo, we immediately started work on, on developing the, the story for The Gruffalo's Child film. In the same way as the first film, we wanted to, to recreate the world of the book and let the readers of the book experience the film as though it's come to life. There were certain challenges. It's set at night. It's very snowy. It's a very clear journey by The Gruffalo's Child on her own through this nighttime world. Working with Studio Soy has been a real pleasure I think they, they are one of the best animation studios in Europe. Um, they, they're a group of really talented uh, animators and directors, um, and they just bring quality. The whole Gruffalo world and the characters were all given. They have all been designed and created before by, by uh, Jacob and Max. The Gruffalo's child, she's new. She's new in the whole, whole film, and she will She's the, she's the star of the new film. So it was interesting to create her and also the winter world. Um, everything is covered by snow. When we had the first snow in, in, in Germany this year, um, I went out with my dog. I took the camera and filmed her, um, and this was also a good, good help to see how the, how the snow looks in, in the fur and to see the footprints. She rubbed her nose and, and you, she looked in the camera and looked really beautiful with all, this, all the snow in, in her face. So she looks a little bit 
if we would put some wire in her ears. 